Everyone, Scott and Scott Man, we're here to do a drive video today. We are heading west on the Ohio Turnpike on Interstate 80 and 90. So this is where I-90 merges into Interstate 80 and becomes a part of the Ohio Turnpike, which, are, which remains that all the way through the rest of Ohio and then going into Indiana. There's a speed trap ahead. driving video today because we, we're going to be heading from I-90 all the way over to I think Highway 4 to the south, southwest of Sandusky. Yeah, it is a beautiful afternoon here and it's a hot one for mid, for mid April. My current thermometer is reading 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Convert that to Celsius, it's just about 27 degrees. So we're seeing some very warm weather for this time of the year. But it's like normally, I think it's only supposed to be like maybe 15 or 15, between 15 and 20 degrees colder than this in mid-April. But it's like, There's a speed trap ahead. But it's because of all the warm weather. It's like, because I was just on this eight days ago going the opposite direction, heading to, in the direction of New York City. And it is amazing that in just eight days, how much bloom there has been just on the Ohio Turnpike. Because I did not see any anything in the trees when I was coming through here again over a week ago. But yeah, it's like with all the warm weather that we've been seeing here, it's been a huge, huge change. But it is a nice thing about spring though, is that it's like after you get tired of the winter, everything, I feel like just comes back to life is everybody's tends to be hibernating inside during the winter time. Except for people who like to go skiing or snowboarding. But other than that, people are usually just hanging out indoors, but it's like when the warm weather comes out, it's like everybody just comes out and it's like, sunlight? What is this? <laughs> But yeah, it's like there's a, there's like a lot of TikToks or a lot of Instagram reels that, that are being posted by Michiganders in the past week where it's like, what is this? It's like, wow. <laughs> and of course, the funny thing is, it's like I was in Massachusetts for, for most of the past week. So I missed the Michigan warmth, but it was just as warm and nice in Massachusetts. So it's not like I went to someplace really cold and then find out I missed the warm weather and I go back and it gets cold again. But yeah, it is beautiful out today. And I have want, I want to do this driving video for a while, but usually when I've gone out to East Ohio or even just or like to the Cleveland area, I'm usually coming back in the evening, so because of the sun being more to the west, I usually, because I usually don't like to film the driving videos when it can, where all you see is the sun glaring into the windshield for most of the drive. But today works out very well because I'm coming back from the northeastern United States and I started my day in Buffalo, New York. So I knew I'd be going through here during the lunch, during the lunchtime. So because of that, the sun's not going to get in my way. So it's perfect to film this today. Yeah, as I was saying in my previous videos, I've, I've had such a great, great trip. Although I've been to New England many times and been to Massachusetts many times, I did get to see some new places in Massachusetts, such as Cape Cod, also went to Salem. I also went to Walden Pond too, which you know, Walden Pond is is the 
place where Henry David Thoreau went for a little over two years. That, if you ever read his book, Walden, that was based off his time there. Which I think back in, when I was a sophomore in high school, I think we had to read some excerpts from Walden in our English class. That and also, we may have been had to read something from Nathaniel Hawthorne too. Another famous American author from the 19th century. And I got to, I got to check, see, go inside his birthplace in Salem, Massachusetts. So I felt like I was on a 10th grade English history tour or like literature tour <laughs> because like I got to go to the Walden Pond, I got to see the birthplace of Nathaniel Hawthorne, and we also had to read, we also read the, the Crucible in the same English class back in high school, which now is all about the Salem Witch Trials, and, and of course, you learn, you learn all about that in Salem, Massachusetts, so it was, it was like one big American Literature History Tour. <laughs> so 20 miles to, to Norwalk, 26 miles to Sandusky. But keep in mind, that's going to downtown Sandusky, not the exit for Sandusky. But with the Ohio Turnpike, yeah, once you get west of the Cleveland area, yeah, as you can tell, it really starts to, to flatten out and does not become as appealing of a drive as it is in the eastern part of the state where you got a lot more hills, especially when you go over the Cuyahoga River to the south of Cleveland. Like that, that's a beautiful bridge that you go over. Which that bridge, I think is between Interstate 77 and Route 8. Which Route 8 or Highway 8, that comes down from the eastern suburbs of Cleveland and goes all the way down to our first goes all straight down to Akron although the funny thing is I-77 and Highway 8 they both go to Akron but yeah it was it was nice to to get away from Michigan for a little over a week so I, as much as I love Michigan it's nice to, to There's a speed trap it's, ahead. it's nice to get out of the state too and check out some more cool things around the United States or around the world. And over here we're about to go over the Vermilion River. So we're leaving Lorraine County and we're entering Erie County. Excuse me, yeah. I just had lunch not too long ago. I ended up getting some Chick-fil-A for lunch. I stopped in over at, in North Olmstead, which is one of the western suburbs of Cleveland. Oh, like, here's the Vermilion River. Which the Vermilion River just empties out into Lake Erie. We're always seeing on the map and some pictures, Vermilion is supposed to be a pretty nice, nice town. I wouldn't mind going there to, ch to check it out sometime. Yeah, maybe I should have some water really quick. Ah, that's, that's a lot better. <clears throat> but yeah, overall, I had a, had, a, had a great time, and it's always a bummer to see vacations come to an end, but it's like, you, you gotta make money somehow. Like, it doesn't matter if you're employed by someone, or if you're self-employed, or if you, well, it's like typically either you're employed by someone or you're self-employed. Because you're either a uh, self-proprietor or you're basically your own boss, like you run your own company. But yeah, it's like the nice thing about vacations is that it's a great way to, as 
as like one of my former bosses used to say, it's a great way to recharge your batteries. There's a speed trap ahead. But yeah, it's like I like how Google is saying, upcoming speed trap. Okay, there, and there hasn't, I, I don't think I've even seen a single Ohio Turnpike police officer or police car yet since I got on the Turnpike. But the moral of the story is don't, don't go 15, 20 miles per hour with the speed limit or you may just end up getting a ticket. <laughs> Anyway, so going back to what I was talking about, it's like, it's a great way to, vacations or holidays are a great way to recharge your batteries because it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like you need to work to earn money and to have a life, but at the same time, you can't have your whole life be work. Which is why it's like, I personally take, a, yeah, the, a work-life balance very, very seriously. One thing I do like about where I do work is that I, I am able to stay close to 40 hours. Sometimes, like, if there's, like, if we have a lot going on, sometimes it might be an hour or two more, which is not a big deal. But, yeah, it could be, it's like, it could be a doozy, especially if you have to happen to have a job that's 50 or 60 or even more than, or like 60 plus hours in a week to where yeah it can it can it can wear you out which yeah it's like the crazy thing is like with the in the United States like it's one of the only countries or especially or like one of the only western countries which does not have a like a mandated vacation day allotment for employees to where basically because with a lot of countries like you're it's required that employers give their employees at least 10 15 20 or 25 days off for work a year and that's just paid time off that not, that doesn't even include holidays like Christmas or or like a country's national day or an, or an independence day. Or in the United States, like, employers can be cheap and they can basically say, too bad you're not getting any time off. It's like, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. Which, yeah, I don't, I, I don't really agree with that just because it's like... There's a speed trap ahead. It's like, you need a break every once in a while. Because there's more to life than just working, working, working. One exception though is if you, let's say you're self-employed and you're doing something you absolutely love. It's like your biggest passion in life is happens to be your job and you get paid to do what you love. That's where that could be a different story where it's like it doesn't feel like work to you. It just feels like it just feels like play. So it's like if you have a job like that, it's like all the power to you. It's like that's that's awesome. But other than that, it's like it's like, it's like you do need a set time away. But it's like, I feel like the, it's like the United States almost should have, should at least give two weeks off a vacation for all employees a year. Because it is a great way to, again, recharge your batteries, as I keep saying, and get some enjoyment in your life. And it's a great, and of course, and it doesn't even have to be travel, too. Like, you don't even have to travel for during, during a vacation. It's like, I always travel during my vacations because I absolutely love to travel and explore new places and meet new people and have a lot of great food.
I get so I'm saying this. I am not. I'm, I'm not a medical professional by any means. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist, anything like that. But it's like sure, people get stressed out quite like periodically like about different things. Even though there's a little bit of stress, but if it ends up being where you're stressed out all the time, it's like it's not that healthy for you. It's like you tend to have more of a negative outlook on life. Because if there's just a lot of factors these days that are causing people to have very high stress and a lot of negativity. And of course, yeah, that can easily get kicking in if you are, let's say, you're having trouble affording your, or having trouble with your finances, you have, you're struggling to pay bills, which I know is really hard these days because with inflation being so high right now and so yeah, it's like, I, it's like yeah, it, it, it can be quite tough, so it's like, yeah, that doesn't help at all, it's like people can really stress out over money, so that maybe because of that they are working more hours or or in some cases working two jobs. Some people, in order to support their family, they may have to work their, a full-time job and then maybe like a part-time job. Like that's a, that's a real thing. So there's that and of course, workplace drama or just your everyday work at your job can be very stressful too. And, and of course it doesn't help when like when like you got all the news networks that's why i always keep saying turn off the news and get out there and explore this wonderful world we have i'm saying that truthfully not sarcastically because again i keep saying this it's like yeah if you watch cable news all day it's 95 it's at least 95 percent negativity minimum 
vacation days that people have to take in the United States because people need to take it, even if it's just two weeks off a year, it's like, it does wonders for you. Because I know everybody, everybody in Europe does that where they get like 15, 20, 25 days off, not including holidays, and it's like, it's like I've, I've even seen studies that it helps. Like it doesn't change, it doesn't change, it doesn't, it's like when not, when you don't take vacations, it doesn't help productivity any better. Well, yeah, it's like, because I just, I just know that like a lot of people are stressed out about a lot of things these days. Some things are, again, some things are kind of hard to avoid, especially if they're in a financial bind or they got severe medical problems or something. But there are other things that can be controlled. And it doesn't help when... There's a speed trap ahead. Like, and it doesn't help when, like, if, like again, if you... All you do is tune in the news or something and you get a bunch of negativity fed and you to where it's like you almost feel like you, you that you can't take it anymore. But yeah, it's hard to say if, if the United States will see like mandated vacation days at some point. Because there's there's gonna be a lot of there's there'll be a lot of political controversy behind that idea, just like with a lot of different issues that are out there these days, where one side will say this, the other side will say the other.
also one, the 128, which goes around Boston. But I didn't get a chance to do that because of really heavy traffic in the Boston area. Where, let's just say it was very much bumper to bumper traffic. So Highway 4, this exit will also take you to Sandusky, but it goes more to the, goes back a little bit because we're technically southwest of Sandusky. But if you're coming over from Toledo, Highway 4 would be your better exit to go to Sandusky. Or if you, or if you want to avoid paying the toll, you can take Highway 2 east from Toledo. It's not all, it's partially a freeway, freeway but it's not immediately east of Toledo. But it is another way to Sandusky without having to, to pay a toll. Alright, so we have reached Highway 4. So I hope you enjoy this video here on the Ohio Turnpike going west from I-90 all the way to Highway 4 to the southwest of Sandusky, Ohio. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that, that subscribe button to uh, come along and uh, join for the venture. And, uh, don't forget to click that notification bell so that way you know when a new video goes live. Well, thank you for watching, and this is Scott.